welcome to the War Academy channel. Today, we have a very curious program, in which we are going to see, how the last months of the Second World War were lived, from the point of view of the German Minister of Armament, this being the famous Albert Speer. When we talk about this conflict, we always tend to focus on the different battles that took place in it. However, the truth is that from the end of 1941, when it became a war of attrition, industrial production became practically more important than the development of military action. It was around the beginning of 1943, when any military victory that might occur on the front mattered little, if the enemy was able to fully recover from the losses in a few days or weeks. As we saw recently in the program on Total War, in which we analyzed in depth the subject of industrial production, it seems that it was not until this date of 1943, when Germany began to be aware of this fact. As we see in the graph, and as paradoxical as it may be, it should be noted that it was precisely the years in which Germany reached its maximum production, the moments in which they suffered the most crushing defeats. This leads us to think that if this production had not increased in the way it did after 1943, it is very possible that the Second World War in Europe would have ended much earlier. In any case, and having seen this, let's move on to the question that has brought us here. When did the Minister of Armaments give up the war for lost? When did Albert Speer recognize that German industrial capacity was already incapable of meeting the needs of the war? Was he correct in his predictions? Well let's see it. During World War II, there were two main industrial regions that Germany had. In the first place we can highlight the Ruhr Basin, located near the natural border between Germany and Holland. The second is found in the region of Silesia, located in the southeast of the Third Reich, in an area that today belongs almost entirely to Poland. As we say, Although there were other places scattered throughout Germany, where there was also a strong industrial production, these two were the most important. As the conflict progressed, Germany was unstoppably losing territory. In addition to having to give up many sources of raw materials, which they had reached, they were also punished by massive bombardments within their borders, which damaged their industries and their communication routes these actions, in addition to paralyzing production in the affected regions, also made it necessary to allocate large resources to their repair. This did nothing more than reduce the industrial capacity of Germany, which, however, reached its best figures just at this time. It is worth questioning ourselves here, as would have been the German military production in these years, if we had not counted on these bombings. Well, having seen this, Let's focus on Albert Speer, and his role as Minister of Armaments and War Production of the Third Reich. Albert held this position effectively and with total control over Germany's military production, since the summer of 1943. He, he was responsible for that productive miracle, which he was able to maintain for a little over a year and a half. Although speaking of defeatism was something that was not allowed, and could lead to harsh sentences for those who dared to question Germany's victory in the war, Albert Speer began to show signs of this imminent defeat from the end of 1944. After the various defeats on both the eastern and western fronts, the situation in which Germany found itself was very difficult. It was at the beginning of 1945, when in a private conversation that Speer had with Goebbels, he told him that Germany could hold out for at most another year. Undoubtedly, this forecast was very optimistic and perhaps he did it to encourage the Reich propaganda minister. Everything would change a few days later, when the Soviets launched the Vistula Oder offensive, which, in addition to positioning them a few kilometers from Berlin, took control of the industrial region of Silesia, ending German military production in it. After this loss, Albert Speer came to recognize for the first time and openly that the war was lost quite possibly, with the intention of not losing importance, and still being considered a heavyweight within the German government, Albert Speer, at the beginning of February 1945, once again communicated to the rest of the German leaders that his ministry was about to deliver a series of decisive and miraculous weapons, which could cause a drastic change in the battlefield, giving victory to Germany. 
without any of these weapons being delivered, or at least not in sufficient numbers to have any impact, in mid-March. Speer recognized that the German economy and production would completely collapse in no more than eight weeks. This was the only note of the minister in which he more or less came close to reality, because although the final surrender of Berlin was only six weeks away, the date of the final surrender of the last government of the Reich did coincide with that prediction. By Albert Speer. Nevertheless, by mid-March 1945, Germany's other major industrial region was still under his control. This would finally be lost a few weeks later after the final breakout from the Western Allies' front. This promptly led the Allied commanders to head full speed to the Ruhr area, to surround the region and thus end the production of German weapons. By early April, the Allies completely encircled this area, leaving the Germans without their last industrial stronghold. From this moment on, Albert Speer's tasks were reduced to a minimum, since he no longer had many industrial areas to manage. His functions became the paralysis of certain orders of total destruction, such as the Nero Order, with the aim of being able to present a more attractive curriculum, for when the end of the war came. After the surrender of Berlin, and the suicide of the German leader, Albert Speer was placed under Donitz's orders in the new government that he headed until his final capitulation a few weeks later. Once captured, Albert was tried at the Nuremberg trials and narrowly escaped being sentenced to death, as three of the eight judges handed down that sentence. He was eventually sentenced to 20 years in prison, which he served in full. After being released in 1966, he wanted to get his job back as an architect, although he was unable to do so. Albert Speer ended up dedicating himself to writing different memoirs and giving interviews both in Germany and in other countries such as Great Britain. He would finally die in 1981, due to a stroke, while he was precisely preparing to give one of these interviews in English territory. Well, so far today's program, in which we have analyzed how was the vision of the last weeks of the Second World War, of one of the most important characters of it. I await your considerations about Albert Speer, who was a character with great ability to weather the storm that came at each moment. That's all, subscribe and support this channel if you like this video and see you in the next program, see you soon.